start here. More bands in. Jax being banned out. Looks like they're targeting the mid laner and the jungle pools to start off. And one thing to note is that the blue side is not in the particular LCS order right now. They have their top laner as last pick just because he does not have all champions. So they will be drafting slightly out of order for their lanes. We got a Kaisa ban coming out on blue side, so not necessarily targeted banning a single lane overall. Yep, that Kaisa is very effective in the jungle and in the bottom lane now since the recent buffs. So it looks like you got two to three jungles banned out, two mid laners, and one to two AD carries. They're hovering. The Swain is the first pick. There's a great top lane and mid lane champion, so we'll see if they lock that in here for the side of Rutgers, and they do lock that in. Looking like that could go either mid or top, but I'm gonna guess that they're gonna play that in the top lane. Yeah, I'm not surprised that that's the first pick since it is such a strong flex pick with, it's just a really good pick overall. Yep, and we'll see if Rutgers here, they might go with their AD carry here. They do pick the Caitlyn, which is just a great early pick in general. Lots of range, lots of utility from the Caitlyn, so we're gonna see if they pick their top or mid lane, or if they maybe go for their, to finish off their bot lane or their jungle here in the first round here of the draft. Yeah, with that Caitlyn, I definitely expect Delaware to play more around the bot side, especially with that Nami. The Caitlyn Nami is not fun to play against. A lot of harass, a lot of sustain with the Nami heals. So Rutgers is just gonna try and survive bot lane as best they can. Yep, and they do pick their Zac up for the jungle, so they've got their jungle pick secured. And they're going to try to make sure that they they might even go for their AD carry, their support here, to try to make sure that they don't have their champion full pinch, since that Swain works as a flex pick. But it's going to be on UD to try to pick their jungler here, or risk having their jungle pool pinched out even more with those two pans already done. Looks like... It is going to be the Ezreal that's locked in for uh, Delaware for their ADC. A uh, good safe pick, can lane decently well against Caitlyn, can match her poke a good bit with his Q. And we got the Trundle coming out in the jungle for uh, Delaware. Yep, looks good from both sides. They have gotten the bottom lane. They ban out the Taric. They're gonna, I'm guessing they're going to try to pinch the support pool now for Your University of Delaware and they're going to go for that mid lane. It looks like that Azir can be pretty lethal. I remember watching Herson earlier in the year and he was pretty deadly on that so no surprise there that that is banned out. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see what they pick up for their mid or top laner and then as well as their support because right now they have Swain is more than likely going to lose lane early to whoever he's against, and then the Trundle will be able to bully Zach. so they don't want to have all of their lanes losing, or their early game is just going to be absolutely miserable. Yeah, definitely, and you know, that power pick Swain does come at a potential cost, but we'll see if they're able to play through that. We'll see if they pick their, I'm guessing they're going to pick their top laner here, out of their next picks here, but we'll see what happens. And Orin, so yes, they do pick their top lane out of there. Swain versus Orin, that matchup can be fairly even early. And I'd say it more likely goes Orin's way later just because Orin gets so incredibly tanky. But if Swain can bully him early, then that could be a good pick. It looks like they might be going for the Bard here. The Bard Ezreal poke is pretty annoying and frustrating, so that could be a good pick. Or the Brand support as well. Brand is another favorite of mine. So we'll see if that comes through. No, they got the Evelyn. Evelyn? Not sure what they're that, doing. That there. could be uh, a placeholder pick, but that looks very out of place in this draft right now. I mean, maybe you run Evelyn top. I don't, I don't see what they're doing here, but hey, we have ourselves an Evelyn support, maybe. I've seen Stranger Things, and they are going for the... Darius, so I guess Darius top lane with the Swain mid, or maybe even a Swain support. 
we could potentially see a swing support there. Yeah, it so. was it was a botched pick. The the Evelyn does is supposed to be brand. I'm not sure why he swapped and accidentally locked in the Evelyn, but it looks like we are going to have to redo draft so they can get their brand support. All right. But well, all picks are going to remain the same. So yes. Besides that, Evelyn, it will be all the same pick. So you'll substitute the Evelyn out for the brand. And we'll be back shortly, jumping straight out of the mode, going right into it. That uh, was a little strange, but we're going to jump ourselves right back into this game in just a hot second, everybody. Thank you all for your patience. It looks like they're changing up their order, too, so they can actually have the correct LCS order. Good on them. Adding that in, we'll see once they get their support in, and then we'll go from there. Yeah, now the, the draft phase should go a good bit faster since everything is supposed to remain the same. Yep. It is indeed somewhat potentially your bad there, but we will see what happens here as we jump ourselves back into the draft here. Should be pretty quick. Same picks and bans as before. We'll see how fast they can burn through this. Grounded. Hopefully this doesn't keep being a reoccurring theme throughout this series. Otherwise, it could take a good bit longer to finish it up. Yeah, I hope not. I mean, I've got some stuff in the evening I'd like to make sure I get to, so I definitely don't want this series to take any longer than it needs to. Yeah, I've I've been in a pick and ban phase where we had a placeholder pick, and then our uh, captain in the top lane forgot that we weren't banning out all five champions immediately and accidentally picked our next ban, and we had to redo it all over again for a second time. Oh, okay. that's a feels bad moment. But it's all good. We are getting ourselves into the draft now. Surprised that they're not banning faster, but maybe they're just trying to take their sweet old time. It looks like Delaware didn't ban a champ for the first ban, but it, it doesn't really matter. They're required to keep the same picks, even if they loot, did end up losing a ban just on accident. Yep, so no surprise here. So I guess we can just kind of just start talking about some of their picks. So we've got the matchup of Swain versus Orin, which... No, it's Darius versus Orin. Darius versus Orin. Yes, correct. It'll be Swain in the mid lane. So Darius versus Orin. Depending on if Darius runs Phase Rush or Grasp or maybe even Conqueror, will kind of depend on how he wants to play this matchup. Obviously, Conqueror and um, in Phase Rush are going for more of that offensive build versus the defensive build from there. You do have the Twisted Fate versus the Swain, so they will have a lot more map pressure globally with the Twisted Fate and the Orin combined. However, you do have the pressure from the stack that can always bring good pressure to a lane. And then you have the Ezreal in Bard versus Caitlyn Nami, which can really go either way because Ezreal can avoid a lot of the poke from the Caitlyn and just kind of buy his time because he does spike very well in the mid game versus Caitlyn's early game and late game power spikes. So they peak at different times of the game. So it should be really interesting to see what happens with this game. Yeah, and Bard's support, especially if he runs Electrocute, really hurts in the early game. So it's going to help to even out a bit of the damage from both sides. And Bard does have his slight heal with his Ws, but Nami definitely can out-sustain the poke from both Ezreal and Bard if they play it right. Absolutely. I'd say that the most critical component of this matchup is going to be from the junglers, so Into the Dusk and Best Cannon NA are really going to be the marquee factors here. Because if they do not manage to... Okay, so it's Alistar, it's not Brand. I guess we were lied to unless that was a bad pick. But if they fucked up again. I hope 
you know, first time, shame on, shame on me. Second time, shame on you. So hopefully there is no shame here except for the shame of whichever team loses this first match. They will have a little bit of shame. However, I, like I was saying, I think that the Zach Trundle is really going to be the key matchup because if Trundle or Zach can get one of their lanes going early, they are great at being able to help teams snowball. And that Trundle pillar synergizes really well with the Orin because it creates that wall for Orin to run into in lanes. So if he ganks the top lane and throws down the pillar, the Orin rush can certainly be an extra component there for an easier gank. Well, it looks like so we are going to have to cancel the queue again. I believe if anyone actually does. Yep, there we go. So not quite sure what is going on. The Evelyn was supposed to be a brand. They locked in the Alistair, and it appears there was a miscommunication between the teams about what the pick actually was supposed to be. So I guess admins told them to stop. I'm not sure as to why. But uh, it looks like we will be taking a quick break to figure everything out. So we will see you guys in a few minutes and hopefully have this all sorted out. Mm-hmm. All right, guys, so we're back with Rutgers versus wow, University of Delaware. And we are going to be completely redoing the draft. So it's fresh picks and bans. Anyone can play anything. But it looks like the Talia is still coming out as well as the Jacks to the bans. So that isn't, hasn't differed much from before. Yeah, I mean, this is essentially just so like we said, we do have a full redo of the draft phase, so anyone can lock in any sort of pick. I would expect bands to roughly remain the same. I don't think anyone had any picks that were necessarily super telling them what they have got a band. But it might change up what they do for these this first phase of the draft based on what they already saw. Or we might just end up seeing the same sets of picks that we've got. We're not sure, but we will see what happens here coming into the new game one. University of Rutgers U versus University of Delaware here in the Northeastern Conference Esports Finals. So it looks like Rutgers bands are all the same on the blue side. Delaware banning, mixing it up slightly, banning the Jackson Oriana from last time, but taking the Swain away. Yeah, I don't so, remember what their third ban was last I can't time. either, I'll, I'll be honest. But we got the Darius pick coming out straight away from the top lane. So they have locked in that top lane, so they're gonna force out either them to pick that Orin, or they're gonna go for the Vlad top lane. Vlad can play really well to Darius. That's a matchup that's gonna snowball one way or the other, nope. but they do lock in the Caitlyn. We'll see if they go for the Nami again as that first pick of that phase, securing that bot lane again. Yep. And they do, so we'll see if they respond with either their bot lane pick or if they go with how they went last time, which is with their jungle and then their AD carry. Covering the cane right now over the Zac from last time. Kane is a personal favorite champion of mine. Yep, that's that's the cane jungle instead of Zac on the side of Rutgers. So with Kane, where what do you normally go? Do you normally go the Darken or do you go the Assassin build? I think the Darken is much better for five v fives. Just to fit well in your team comp. The Assassin is good for defeating squishies, but in a 5v5 coordinated team, it's very easy to protect your carries, and he becomes really easy to just pick off and kind of become, he becomes useless in the late game. We got Aurelia instead of Orn coming in for the University of Delaware. This is the new slightly reworked Aurelia. Seek clarity. We do still have the Ezreal from Delaware. Or yeah, from this Rutgers. Will, this will be interesting to see what happens. They have banned out the Taric. So again, targeting that bottom lane, the, ju the jungle top and AD carry 
have been picked. Can they ban out the Jarvan? So they're trying to now target out that jungle. Maybe we'll see a ban on the Zap or the jungle, perhaps. They do, again, double out that support ban. So we'll see what happens here in the final ban of game one to kind of determine what Rutgers is going to do. The new Irelia, I have not played against it or with it much, but I've heard that she's really, really strong right now. So she is a very, very strong pick right now. Her laning is not the greatest right now, and especially into Darius, they can look to punish that with his strong early game. But Irelia late game is was a monster, but she she did receive a bit of a harsh nerf on this recent patch towards her late game and her damage. And we do have the Vladimir mid pick, unless for some reason that's not really a jungle in a Vladimir top. But I would assume not. <laughs> yeah. I've seen stranger things happen. You know, to be completely fair, I play jungle brand, and it is dang fun to play jungle brand. <laughs> so. That just feels like it's horrible until level three. I mean, all you do is you clear to level three, you get your two buffs, you walk into the enemy jungle, and you, the enemy jungler. It's all right, back, so we got it, it's back to free alone, but we do have the LeBlanc coming in to counteract is... against the Vladimir. This is the re reworked LeBlanc, so aka LeBlanc old old LeBlanc. Yeah, old LeBlanc without the silence. And they do lock in the Alistar. The Israel Alistar combo is something that is always annoying because you can get a couple shots from your Q off with the Ezreal when you get that headbutt pulverized. So it should be interesting to see that into the Caitlyn Nami. However, they can easily kite back against that. So we'll see what the final pick, the jungler for University of Delaware comes in here as the final pick. Of the Covering game. Ivern. And we do have that locked in. So we have the assassin versus the friend of the forest. Should be interesting here. Definitely gonna be a good time watching this. I think the mid lanes now get a little bit more interesting with the LeBlanc and Vlad. You kind of come back to slight, I'd say on the side of Rutgers, they have more of that assassin built comp with the Kane and the LeBlanc. They can go to other lanes, roam pretty easily and just 100 to zero, primarily probably their bottom lane of UD, yeah. but UD does have a lot of kind of beef and sustain from the top side of their map along with the Nami. So. I'd say later in the game, it's going to favor University of Delaware, but I'd, I think Rutgers has to take advantage of their early game power in order to make it through. Yeah, and it looks like that's Aurelia mid and Vladimir top, not Aurelia top into Darius. All right, well, that should actually be even more interesting because that'll take away a lot of Darius's early game power as Vladimir can just pull anything that's going on for the Darius and I really versus LeBlanc. Uh, I really can do the stun lock if LeBlanc jumps in at the wrong time. So we'll have to see what happens with that distortion. But we got about two minutes getting into this game, everyone. University of Delaware versus Rutgers. Game one of this best of five as the Northeastern Conference Finals. Go ahead, put in your votes now. Either hashtag UDWin or hashtag RUWin. See who is going to win. Support your schools, support your friends. Support your enemies, support whoever you want, support your favorite champion. And we will see what happens here in game one, about two minutes, then we will be into that, into the first phase of this game. I'm just interested to see what these junglers do because Ivern is obviously going to be looking to take away the early camp level one invite or level one in the invade from the Ivern just easily smite away a camp instantly from the Kane, whereas the Kane has a very fast clear and can try and invade the Ivern, who's early game. Any any point in the game, honestly, his 1v1 potential is not the greatest. So it'll be interesting to see who ends up getting the advantage in the jungle. Yeah, the jungle pathing will be interesting here to watch to see how they go about that. Um, Ivern does have some pretty fast clear that's going on. However, the Kane also, in his own right, has a lot of different options for where he can start. So he could always just do the Raptor start and try to keep his team pushing hard into lanes to get the early level two. But we will 
see what happens here. About a minute out from getting ourselves into game one here of University of Delaware versus Rutgers University. And so we do have everyone locked in. These are the correct picks, the correct bands. There is no going back. There's nothing that can be stopped here. 30 seconds, and we are into officially game one of this best of five here, everybody. Thank you very much for your patience on these first two kind of botched drafts. We'll, we'll just say Rito, please, and do the remake. And we got everything through that, so... We're going to get things going here. 15 seconds, then we are into this game. So you've got Eternal Crystal, Best Cannon NA, Virtue, on Andes, and On Poles, or On Poles versus Rito Gods, Please, Into the Dusk, Herson, East Coast Carry, and Night Stealth on the side of Rutgers versus University of Delaware. Game one, getting ourselves into this matchup here. Our screens are loading up, and then we are into this game. I know everyone's favorite part of the stream is now over. I know everyone enjoys watching the three-minute stream delay. Best part of the game, in my opinion. Oh, but now, sadly, we're going to have to get into watching some actual League of Legends. I know everyone tried and contain your disappointment, please. I know. We'll see what happens here. Lots of diamond and challenger symbols and master symbols across the board here. With Darius being the lone gold in the top lane. There we go. He is running Conqueror, and you notice how Vlad is actually running the Predator. So that should be interesting with LeBlanc and Kane both running Electrocute. I really are running Arcane Comet. So that should also That's be a, fun. I've not seen that from an Aurelia before. I almost always see Conqueror. Yeah, it looks like she's going for a little bit more of some, I guess I'd like to say almost like reliable poke damage that she can get off of with probably her W and her E. So we'll see what she can do there. She might just be using that to try to survive the laning phase versus the long will be pretty explosive early on. And we do have the airy from Ivrin. Not really a surprise there. His shield is fantastic. So we'll have a lot of sustain. I think they're going to be really looking to power up either the Irelia or the Caitlyn in these fights. So we'll see what happens here as we get ourselves ready to jump into this game. But we gotta pause. It appears that the Aurelia has bug splat. So we'll see what happens here. If they manage to get themselves into this fight. All right, we are back, we are good. No more pauses, please. Let's get ourselves into it. Game one of University of Delaware versus Rutgers jumping into that game. Let's see we'll if see we get any here. cheeky invades. Yeah, we do have pings going across the map. Everyone's setting up, looks like, for more of that five point or four point kind of sustained a much more defensive start for both teams. I don't think anyone wants to take too big of a risk starting off here in game one, kind of get themselves going. We'll see what goes on here. I think a fairly standard start. Looks like they might even have Ivern starting at his Raptors to get that going and then go and just clear and spite maybe his red or his blue. With the cane also likely starting the Raptors or maybe the red buff. I think Ivern would start up his Raptors and let his uh, passive charge so he doesn't have to smite it and then immediately head towards Kane's blue and try for the smite steal. Yep, so we'll see here if maybe LeBlanc throws down a ward for defensive purposes. It looks like the Kane is going to be starting red buff over Raptors. I think that's a bit of a mistake on their part, because Caitlyn and Nami are already going to look, in, look to shove in early, get that push and abuse Caitlyn's early game power, where Ezreal and Alistair are going to have to just try and survive the lane, where I think they should have tried to get the level 2 advantage and all in but it looks we like you have the team waiting for them in the bush there see what they can do there i'm surprised caitlin didn't go with the traps maybe to try to 
get some early damage there, the traps and the bubble, that might have been a little more effective. Yeah, obviously the Alistair and Ezreal are going to take a bit more damage. It looks like the Caitlyn has overheal to help give her extra shielding with the Nami as well. Ezreal getting really poked down early, already under 50% health, level 1, forced to burn his pot in the first minute that they're in lane and just abusing him with the extra Kate range. He's he might be forced to back level one. He's just taking heavy poke from this Caitlyn, just completely zoned off of the wave. Yeah, we can definitely see that Caitlyn power pick. The reason that they first that for that extra damage, they have really pushed them out there. You do we got a gank in coming in games. from the Kane level three in the mid lane. Gets the electrocute coming out. Uh, flash forward and LeBlanc gets the first blood. That's flashes out of the jungle and mid laner as well as Aurelia's flash but the LeBlanc secures the kill. Yep, definitely just playing a little bit greedy there. Good on Rudgers for jumping in on that. Delaware definitely trying to hold that flash as much as possible, but then flash a little bit too late after taking the Reaping Slash from Kane. Takes a little bit too much. Does get two for one on the flash, but you did give first blood over to the mid laner. So should be able to come back with probably a Fiendish Kodax as their first item. Yeah, I don't know if Aureli just didn't have her, didn't take her stun level two, or if it was on cooldown because she only used her dash in that fight. So if she had had her stun, she might have had a chance to get away. But looks like Kane is hovering the bot side looking for a gank. The Ezreal is back to full health, but they still, he is down. He's actually fairly even in CS right now, but he, the, the Delaware does have that big wave pushing where Kate can just get a slight lead back. Yeah, they did I a heard. good job of trying to keep the freeze there, but yeah, you definitely have some action going, potentially going down the bot lane, pings going everywhere, Ivern looking for something, but not really going to find much. The only lane that's going to be really gankable early on in this game will be that top lane, that Darius can be exploited when he's pushing in, but I think for the most part, most of the other lanes are going to be pretty safe unless somebody makes an unforced error. Yeah, I think the uh, Kane is going to be looking mid a lot if he wants to get that red form, because that is the only melee champion on the side of Delaware for him to pick up. There's another gank coming in. Aurelia doesn't have flash. The chain lands. She's stunned up. Aurelia does have the stun this time and gets it onto LeBlanc, but she still goes down and LeBlanc is 2-0 in the first five minutes. Yep, they were able to still sidestep the stun, so it only got LeBlanc at the last bit of it after already landing, after landing all those chains, so just easy kills from them, abusing the fact that I really had to burn her flash early, and this I really without teleport either. So running that ignite with that aggressive early start is not being able to take advantage of this new... Surprisingly, I really is up in CS, but, but two kills is, that way. is just a much bigger goal difference than five CS. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, it looks like the Aurelia is already down 600 gold in the first five minutes of the game. Yeah, that gold deficit hurting there. It does have the the lost chapter and two two procs on that dark seal. So if LeBlanc can continue to pop off here, then will be able to really push themselves further ahead. The bottom lane, there is a good C at the 5, 6 CS lead and about a 7 CS lead in the top lane. So overall, University of Delaware is playing the farm game really well, which can pay off benefits. Oh, well, yeah, Roman Bot gets the stun on the Alistair. Ezreal forced to heal to keep his support alive. The Ignite comes down into Aurelia. Aurelia is really low, trapped, and she's going to fall to the Alistair Ignite. The LeBlanc teleports down. And Nami is forced to flash away. Bubble lands onto the LeBlanc, but she's still chained up. And Kane, oh, LeBlanc picks up the kill onto the Nami. So Delaware tried to make something happen bot lane, but it ends up being an 0-2 in favor of Rutgers. And Le LeBlanc is even farther ahead now. Yep, I mean, you just had them coming down trying to get that gank off, but the advantage that they had from Virtue with that teleport, able to get down faster and react, 
them getting a little bit too low. Not being level 6 yet on the really early Ivern, so you can't call in Daisy or I really is ultimate. Just being able to kind of poke that great on the side of Rudger's bottom lane for being able to kind of maintain their composure, not burn any summoners that they didn't need to burn, and just keep themselves poking back there. Sadly, we can't see how close Kane is to evolving or which form he would get at that when he reaches that state. So we're just going to have to wait and see. It looks like Ivern is spotted in the mid lane trying to go for a gank on LeBlanc, but it's spotted out and nothing's going to come from it. Yep, again, I'm surprised that this Ivern has not been focusing on the top side of the map. I feel like Darius is just an easier game to get off, especially once you do have the fact that this Predator on the Vladimir can be used, and you just get a lot of damage off this guy. I mean, he does have the Mercury Treads, which will make it difficult for him to do a ton of damage, but just that gank there, I think would be really effective to maybe get the flash out or force the teleport. Yeah, and you have to be careful to play around Conquer with Darius too, because if he manages to get his passive off, the ult coming down onto the LeBlanc picks the wrong uh, shadow and ignites the LeBlanc, and she does manage to fall to the ignite. So despite the fact that Aurelia was 0-3, she did manage to pick up a 1v1 onto the LeBlanc, and the Ezreal Arcane Pulse, or whatever the hell it's called, I'm blanking right now, misses the Aurelia, she will get away. True shot barrage, that's what it is. Kane. Chasing down the Ivern. Ivern hitting the Blast Cone. Falls out Getting Daisy. ulted by Kane and just easy pickup. Yeah, definitely no some good plays from UD there fighting that, getting that kill. Also noticing you do have Herson going Hextech Revolver and Dark Seal. So you might even be looking at, at this point, you might be looking at a slightly AP heavy Irelia, but we do have a fight going on in the bottom lane. Kane getting really poked out, has to be very careful, and he might fall. Yeah, he's gonna fall to the Caitlyn. No alt, no flash to escape. So, he got greedy. He didn't realize that he was on a pink horde. And no Alistair to back him up, and he just falls, getting bubbled and burst down by the Caitlyn. Now Caitlyn has double buffs, so that's gonna make it even better for her to abuse the Ezreal and Alistair in the bot lane. Yep, and you do have this Irelia was able to poke out from LeBlanc again. You're starting to see more of that power now that she's feeling more comfortable on landing those stuns and just able to really do some damage to that squishy LeBlanc there. So we'll see what they're able to do with it. He's making pressure from two to three lanes of University of Delaware, able to push him with the extra buffs, the range, and some and of that power. It looks like the Aurelia is going to be going Hextech Gunblade first item. She has a revolver as well as the two longswords, so she needs some sustain to avoid getting poked out. LeBlanc going in. Darius is in the mid lane, pulling the Aurelia. Aurelia does not have any flash. The knock up from the cane. He is red form and is killed by Darius. Yeah, you got the Darken. The Darken and the Darius coming on in to support that. Three people coming down just to kill off the Aurelia, which I think is could be potentially worth it for the side of University of Delaware if they're able to make some more out of it. Just based on all that map pressure that was applied just to get that extra damage. You do Kane have going on Kane in to there. the Varus. The Ivern is here and he's caught out. Ivern or er, Kane does have his ult to try and heal back up and escape. Darius is coming in. The Predator was popped by the Vladimir, but it looks like Kane is going to Oh, Kane getting away, but the ult picks him off from the Vladimir. Vlad Poole comes out to run away from Darius. Darius flashing in. Vlad flashes back away. Daisy still beaten on Darius. He gets knocked up and is going to have to retreat. Ivern and Vlad might just chase him down. Darius is low. Pops the plant in the river to try and get some health back. But it looks like he's just going to run away into his topside jungle. Good job oh, from the side of the Delaware countering Chain that landing game. onto Aurelia, misses the stun, and it looks like they're just gonna back out and Ivern's gonna get the wolves. Yeah, if like going on bot lane, immediately East Coast carry del by the side of Rutgers. Goes on in and we'll see if they manage to go for that second kill on the support. Nami does manage to get themselves away, but 
great power play from the side of Rutgers starting to catch up and stacking that tier as well. About 200 stacks on the tier right now. Yeah, it looks like bot lane, they just all end her with the Alistair ult and ignite and she just couldn't get away. And with that, they're rewarded with the dragon from all that top lane pressure. And, and the kill bottom lane does manage to secure that first dragon infernal drake as well. So that's going to provide them more and more of that potential lifting power that they may have. Yeah, this this uh, Caitlyn Nami lane isn't working out as great as I thought. I think they hoped it would. Trying to get that first tower and all that pressure. Kane ganking mid again. Aurelia dashing back to a minion that was barely alive without flash. So she does get away. Ivern is there to support her. LeBlanc going in does land, manage to land a stun onto both. The passive of LeBlanc is popped. Knock up onto Aurelia. Kane still going in. Does have the ultimate. And it looks like Aurelia is just dead to rights. Yep, does, does, does her best with her W to provide that shield, but unfortunately just too much damage from the darkened form of Kane. And it's a very early of all evolution from the Kane. He evolved at 10 minutes. Yep, definitely getting some good damage in from him and some great use out of that. You got a fight going on in the top lane, some trading back and forth from these two just powerhouses. Well, I'm just going to pull away to safety. We do have three people sitting around that bot lane looking for him. Another gank coming in from Kane going in on the Vlad. Pulled, knocked up, and just nothing he could do there. Didn't have pull up and just dies to the Darius. We got a teleport coming in though from the LeBlanc. Like going down in bottom lane. Ivern did go for a gank for LeBlanc TP. Tries to dissuade it. Doesn't manage to land the chain onto the Caitlyn. Does take a bit of damage from the Q, but everyone gets out and the teleport, as well as the flash from Nami, is burned in that fight. Yep, and they do get that first blood tower up in the top lane. So this Darius really starting to come online. 2 and 0, oh, probably about to finish up his Black Cleaver. Really going to be able to pressure this Vladimir right now. So we'll have to see if Delaware shifts their focus to more of utilizing the Vladimir to yank other lanes, or if they maybe just try to keep him there to occupy the Darius. You have a lot of pings going down bottom lane. Three and four people heading down there. Fight breaking out mid lane, but just poke fest coming back and forth. Alistair stepping on a trap. They want to clear out that pink ward with the superior gate range, and there's, there's nothing Alistair can do. Yep, not really anything to do there unless he wanted to headbutt pulverize over that wall, but that would certainly be his death without having his flash available or his ultimate. So just kind of resetting everything in the game. You got champions waiting around now. You do have the Sheen and the Mana Meme built up from the Ezreal now, so he is starting to build up his stacks on that. Headbutt pulverize onto the Caitlyn, and she is just instantly deleted, even with the Ivern giving her the shield just a little bit ago. No flash or heal to try and escape. Yep, and you got 3 0 from the support Alistar now. Jumping in. Kane might be jumping in a little too far, though. You have three people meeting in there. Ulted by the Aurelia, manages to flash out of the ult. He does have his to try and heal up. But he does go down. The cane, or the cane falling. Alistair popping his ultimate stunned up. The Ezreal falls to the Vlad, and there is no support for the bot lane and jungle of Rutgers. Darius continuing to split in the top lane though, so it looks like they're at least going to match the bottom turret, but losing, possibly losing a tier two. And this Caitlyn might be chased down by Darius. Yeah, we'll have to see what happens. You do have a level eleven Darius versus the level 8 Caitlyn here. Does not have the wave though, so we'll only able to get about a third down. Taking a lot of damage now. Takes about down half He's HP. very greeting for Caitlyn. Poked out for under half health. Aurelia going to come in from mid lane and cut him off. Can he get to the blast cone in time? And he does. Aurelia can still try and wrap around to kill him, but they're going to let him go because they don't know where anyone, uh, the bot lane and jungle are from Rutgers. Yep, definitely a greedy and risky play. I think unnecessary play from the side of General Crystal. Just 
no need for that. They are pinging down on the Rift Herald though. So they can yeah, he's... try to get that off early. He's very lucky he didn't have to burn any sums to escape there because he 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 really did greed hard and was lucky he wasn't punished for it. Mm -hmm. Looks like Alistair's trying to establish some more deep vision and clear out some of Delaware zone in their topside jungle. Yep, you can now get the sweeping trinket at any level of the game since they removed the kind of like primary level of that trinket. Yeah, they removed the sweeping lens. Now you can just get oracles at any point. Darius pulling the Vlad in, going for a trade. Darius under half health doesn't get the heal off. Vlad's still full. Darius passive pat, pa eh, passive pop. He's forced really low. The oh, the redemption coming down and stealing the kill away from the Vladimir under the Ivern. LeBlanc is there to try and see if she can. Oh, and just absolutely demolishes the Vlad. Yep, absolutely does some damage there, and you do have Alistar trying to hold off the tower here. You've got Kane coming in, the True Shot Barrage helps clear out the wave. Don't forget, you also have LeBlanc coming in to meet. There's a three versus two here. Rally is all up and right. Ivern flashing under turret. Kane ulted, stuck under the turret, taking a lot of turret shots, and he's going to fall to the Aurelia. The Alistar's ultimate popped as well, and he's really low. Time's out, stunned up, and it looks like he's going to be killed. Oh, the LeBlanc being a good teammate and taking the shot. Darius teleporting in, pulling the Nami, but it looks like she's just going to walk her way out with all the slows. And Darius is already under half health with his teleport. And it looks like Delaware is just seeing if they can catch anything else off the back end of this fight. But I think they're just going to get the mid turret off of this and open up the map. And they could get Infernal Drake after. Yep, they're going to be rotating towards that Infernal Drake. They will be five men strong, even though... East Coast carry is about at two thirds HP and out of mana. They can certainly just burn this down with all the recent health games and critical strike they have available. We'll see if it looks like Rutgers is willing to contest this, willing to push on in. And there are not out pretty hard. Build not going into the pit, going to just completely pop the Aurelia. Darius there getting a two man pull, killing the Ivern. Vlad trying to salvage anything from this fight. He's healing up a good bit, but it looks like he's going to end up falling to the Ezreal in the end. And that is a four for zero fight. Kane trying to chase down the Caitlyn, but can't get her. And they do pick up the Drake as well. So Delaware fails on the Drake. Kane greeting hard for Caitlyn. Can he get her? Misses the knockup and he's stuck. He's dead to rights to the Caitlyn. Don't think the flash was entirely necessary, but it's a kill. Yep. Really greedy there from Kane. I don't needed to do that. They yeah. could easily secure just both these towers, which they will ultimately secure anyway. Reestablish his vision there. Great job from the side of Rutgers, though. They took advantage of the fact that University of Delaware did not have any of their ults available. There was no tidal wave. There was no hemo plague, and there was no Vanguard's Edge available or Daisy available from the side of University of Delaware. So they were just able to take full advantage of jumping in. They had already taken some damage from the Dragon and we're able to push them out and get a great headbutt and pulverize from Alistar, knocking two or three people up. LeBlanc just the leading person there in the mid lane, and Eternal Crystal just demolishing with that 4-1 Darius. Completed Black Cleaver now, too. It looks like he's going to be building... Yeah, he just completed his Righteous Glory, so he can chase down members of Delaware even easier. And this Aurelia is actually building AP. She has Gunblade and Lichbane. So, that's... I haven't seen an AP Aurelia before. Yeah, I've not seen that either. That is interesting. So the one thing, though, that that does give at least a slight... You might be able to call it an advantage for Rutgers. Is that majority of... Sorry, of Delaware. Is that majority of Rutgers are going to be stacking magic just now. So, therefore, you can rely on that, Caitlyn. If you can keep her alive... Give her the shield from Daisy, uh, from Ivern. Give her the shield from Nami. With that ardent sense potentially coming out of both of them, you can get a lot of extra damage and attack speed out. Looking to damage that Rift Herald before Shelly gets in there. Shelly does get the one bit of damage in, but really not too much on the tower. So let's kind of think about what well, we got a brief moment here in time to take stock of what's going on and kind of what's next for both of these squads. I think that Wrecker just needs to keep up the pressure like they do now, keep forcing these fights, 
while Delaware is really weak and not let the Vlad and the Caitlyn reach their late game potential because I think at that point they will the Caitlyn will absolutely outscale the Ezreal as and the the Vlad will be very strong in the team fights as well. But I honestly don't know if this AP Aurelia can outscale LeBlanc. Yeah, I'm curious to see what will happen with that AP side of Herson. I'm actually curious, I don't know what the, her scales with AP. So her ultimate, her flawless, flawless duet, and for Defiant Dance. So three of her four abilities do actually scale with AP, so it does make some sense. You can go with that more AP on hit damage route from the Gunblade Lich King. We have a fight breaking out in this mid lane. LeBlanc going to be caught out by the Aurelia. The Aurelia does get killed by Kane, but he doesn't get his ult off. Steps on a Caitlyn trap, and Caitlyn manages to pick her off. LeBlanc doesn't fall to the Caitlyn ultimate, and it just looks like a one for one. I thought the LeBlanc was dead for sure at that point. Yep, survived by the skin of her teeth with solid 10 HP. Any bit more damage would have taken her down. Vlad is there trying is. to chase down the Eternal Crystal. 4v1 Darius. Let's see if he manages to pick one up. LeBlanc teleporting in to assist him. He is fairly tanky. And LeBlanc just absolutely deletes the Caitlyn. Darius pulling in the Vlad and the Ivern. LeBlanc really low. Still trying to kite this out. Darius doesn't manage to get the heal off on his Q. Vlad trying to chase either of them down and get a kill. The Alistair is there as well with the Ezreal. And it looks like Vlad and Ivern are now the ones caught out of position. And it looks like it's going to be a double kill. Well, two kills picked up. The Darius dunks the Vlad and Kane is going to pick up the Ivern. So, got a little bit too greedy at the back end of that and they're punished for it. Yeah, again, both teams kind of playing a little bit more um, greed than I think they need to be. They're taking advantage of the, the mistakes of the opponent, but they're also taking, I think, a little bit fighting off more than they can chew. The Baron has been started, though, by the side of Rutgers. They got four men strong in here, and LeBlanc is just trying to keep that poke out there. It's going to have to be a miracle steal with no Daisy. Aurelia going into the pit, but she's going to be headbutted out. Her W can't negate enough damage to the ignite onto the Ezreal does manage to pick him off in the end. He can't get enough to heal, but Kane does secure the Baron. So it is a one for one, but Rutgers do get the Baron. So overall, a win for them. Yeah, definitely a win for Rutgers. It's good to take that power out of the Ezreal by removing his Baron. However, he'll likely be grouped up with the team anyway, so it doesn't necessarily take away too much. However, you do have the third dragon spawning here in about 10 seconds, and Darius still in the top lane. For Rutgers, no teleport available, and so it looks like you'll have that grouping from the side of UD to go down for that dragon, potentially. Mountain Drake this time as your third dragon. Looks like Darius is going to back right now and just let Top push on its own. The rest of Rutgers is grouping around bot. Kane spotted out on a ward, get a little Caitlyn poke. But I don't think that Delaware is going to be able to contest this Drake. Not right now, however, you do have Kane maybe backing. Yep, you have back from the Alistar and the Kane jumping in. They did give Caitlyn the second red buff of the Ivern buffs. So they might just be trying to buy their time a little bit, maybe wear out a little bit of this Baron buff. They don't have any vision outside of their jungle right now on the side of UD, so good job from Rudgers for clearing out the vision and also establishing a good presence in their jungler. Who up immediately taken by virtue here and it looks like by virtue they are going to get that red buff since they have all that vision available to them inside their jungle looks like kane is going to be zoning off any members of delaware while the rest of his team picks up the drake and kane it looks like he's going for the uh death stance oh the dragon resets a little <laughs> they have to go back and finish it off but Kane going more offensively oriented instead of that more tanky bruiser with perhaps a spirit visage armor item for the Caitlyn. He's just going to be looking to do damage and heal. Yep, and you're looking at now about the 7,000 gold lead side of Rudgers. 7,000 gold plus three elemental breaks already. 
you are just getting a lot of damage done. Kane immediately jumps Nami. on Nami. Not even able to proc her ultimate. The Blanc does manage to escape, but get the Kane gets popped by the Vladimir. Darius is coming in to the fight a bit late, but it looks like Wreckers is going to have to back off with one man down for Baron. Yeah, I mean, they definitely have been able to take advantage of the fact that they trade jungler, support for jungler on the side of UD here, so... so it looks like UD's still going to chase down. Try and get a kill. They stun up the Darius. Aurelia using her W to mitigate some damage. Darius pulling in Aurelia as well as the Ivern. Alistair pops his ultimate, just completely CC chained and is killed off by the Ivern. Caitlyn still going in. LeBlanc here absolutely deletes the Vladimir. Ezreal picks up the kill onto Aurelia. Caitlyn trying to kill the Ezreal, but does fall to the combined power of LeBlanc and Ezreal. So a 3-4-1 in favor of Rutgers. LeBlanc flash flashing forward, getting the chain onto the Ivern. Ivern flashes out and LeBlanc is caught in the bubble. But it looks like Rutgers can continue their push with their Baron buff. And Delaware just having to retreat. The Baron buff should phase out after this wave. We're actually on this wave, right? Good job again from Rutgers just continuing to press that fight, continuing to press that up and not being able to not giving UD a moment to breathe here. They're going to easily take down this first tower and maybe even crack open that inhibitor. Yeah, it looks like Delaware's just getting really desperate at this point. They're over chasing, just trying to pick up kills and it's ending up just not going in their favor and they're just falling farther and farther behind. Yeah, definitely some lessons that will need to be learned after this game. I'd say the biggest thing that they need to try to focus on is well, we got a little bit of a Kane deletion going on to the Nami. Kane. Might be going a little too deep. Flashes forward, and now Kane is stuck in the base and going to be killed off by Caitlyn. Okay. Kane is great, great use of hard. Lost there from the Nami to keep herself alive there and flashing correctly to avoid the Kane sight. But really, what they needed to be doing here on the side of Delaware. You don't see the you see the last whisper from Caitlyn, but honestly, you should have gone with the executioner's calling first. Mitigate the healing from Ezreal and Kane and Darius and Alistar. You know you can get that armor pen a little bit later as a second part of the item, but spend the 800 gold on executioner's calling, and she's going for the Lord Dominic's regard, which I think is the completely wrong item to go right now. As someone that plays a lot of AD carry, you gotta go to mitigate the healing from these four champions that can all heal up. Yeah, and it's... The Lord Dominix is really only going to be useful with the Alistair and the Darius. With the Kane not building more tanky, it's not going to be nearly as effective as it would be with the reduced healing, especially with him building this Dust Blade, although he does get a Hex Drinker in between to help mitigate the damage from Aurelia and Vlad. Yeah, I just don't agree with going for that build path, but that's just me. They're going to make no, it. I, I absolutely agree with you on that. Yeah, they will live their life. They will not have me tell them what to do. And looks like we got a death push waiting here for Ivor and he's gone out and, and just he absolutely just swayed him. Deleted. Vlad pulling out, but Kane was inside with his ultimate. He's going to be forced to Zanya's. Aurelia going after the Kane. Darius pulling the Vladimir, bubbled up stunned by the Aurelia, and it looks like Vlad is going to survive. Darius forced to flash away, and the ult, I think coming down onto the wrong person from the Caitlyn, meant to ult the Darius and not the Alistair. But only Ivern killed in that fight. Yep, you do have LeBlanc teleporting in, though, running up with those home guards. Yeah, LeBlanc flanks can be extremely dangerous. This LeBlanc is 10 and 1. She's a massive threat. Aurelia going onto the cane. User W does kill off the cane. LeBlanc kind of stuck between Aurelia and Nami in their base, but Darius is here to back her up. Aurelia dashes onto her and LeBlanc dashes away. We got a small fight going in the top lane as well. Alistair forced to flash away from the Caitlyn who eed forward. This is a very, very bloody first game. Oh, absolutely. You have about a 10,000 gold lead here from the side of Rutgers. However, the issue being right now, while they do have that 10,000 gold lead, as it gets later and later, that gold lead means less, and this team that scales really well late game 
is going to continue to scale and build up to a point where if they just keep East Coast carry alive, he can indeed carry this whole game. Yeah, the Ezreal is definitely not going to be able to match the Caitlyn late game. And it looks like Rutgers, a lot of things did come down onto the Baron. So it looks like they're going to be trying to establish some vision and probably pick that up within the next few minutes. Yep, and you do have the fourth Elemental Drake coming up here soon, which is that Mountain Drake I just checked. So that's live in 10 seconds, so the dance is going to be around. If you grab that second that second Mountain Drake for that 20%, or if we go for that Baron, we might see a little bit of cheese here from either side, but it looks like Kane's just going to go over and take care of that dragon by himself while the rest of the team postures around the Baron. Yeah, they... The Delaware team doesn't have like any vision extending past the river, so they have no clue that he went down while the rest of the team stayed up towards the Baron pit. So they're not even going to try to contest it because they don't know he's there. And he's just going to pick that dragon up for free. Yep, and you see even on the vision scores across, well, honestly across their support mainly, 65 vision score from the Alistar versus the highest being a 50 from the Nami. So just a lot better clearing of vision from the side of Rutgers. And even with the control wards that University of Delaware has on the field and in their pockets, they're just not using it to try to get any extra vision. Yeah, and Rutgers has the two sweepers on the Ivern, or Delaware has the two sweepers on Ivern and Nami to try and help clear out the vision that Rutgers is trying to push into their own jungle, whereas the Kane is still sitting on his regular trinket, and only Alistair has the sweeper. Yep, so far that's all that's been needed, though, from the side of Rutgers, and they're sending East Coast Carry up to the top lane to clear out. Looks like they're going to start up this Baron. And Vladimir went bot lane. They don't have any idea what's going on, and he's definitely going to have to teleport if they want any chance of contesting this. But it looks like they're going to have to just give it up for free while LeBlanc zones out the rest of the team. That teleport from Vladimir is very late. Yeah, very late in no position to do it. They get that that Baron for free. And great job from Alistar just zoning out properly on the side of knocking the Ivern away. That is the goal if you are playing Alistar. You sit at the edge of the pit. And if you see the jungler, you just headbutt pulverize them to knock them out and keep them out from from being able to get to get that smite. Yeah, and it looks like the bot turret has fallen on the side of Delaware as well. So it's an open inhib now with these Baron buffs on all members of Wreckers. Kane fighting a rally in the jungle flashes forward. I think that was entirely unnecessary, but he gets the ult off. The Nami heal comes down. The damage mitigation onto the rally is massive, but Alistair shows up, knocks him off. And Kane picks up the kill. Double knockup onto the Vlad and the Nami. The Ezreal is there to support them as well. The Ezreal picks up the kill onto the Nami. Vlad knocked up again. Kane's still going forward. And he's going to fall to Ezreal. Ivern, Caitlyn flashing away. The Ezreal flashing forward trying to pick up the kills. But it looks like Rutgers can just power their way through bot lane and maybe end the game right here. If they are certainly looking to finish this game off here and now. Head, headbutt pulverize onto the Ivern, kills him. LeBlanc going into the fountain and kills Caitlyn, but the Kane reading a little bit too much forward and killed by the fountain. Caitlyn getting a kill, but it doesn't matter. It's too little, too late, and Rutgers are going to end the game right here. Yep, and you end that 11 and 1 LeBlanc. Coming out, even though there was a ton of pressure coming at her early in, in the mid game, managed to only give up one death, tied with Darius for least deaths in that game. Comes out very strong there. Great showing from Rutgers. Taking game one, 30 to 16, about 35 minutes into the game. Crushing University of Delaware in game one here.